Hello, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you uh, for joining another Wednesday. It, you have all made it to Wednesday of yet another week of this craziness. So thanks for joining. Um, today, we've got a good workout for you in store. I will be doing a little bit of strength and some uh, stretching and yoga as well. Um, we'll be doing some yoga just to kind of warm up and then um, and then head into some strength uh, workout. Um, we'll have uh, Coach Susie Snyder uh, leading this workout again this week um, from her home in, um, in Reno. And uh, you'll see she's, she's in her little home studio there, which I think is probably a bit of a combination of studio and uh, living room. But you can tell where her priorities are, um, that training is, is a big part of what she does. Um, the, uh, I do just want to mention, uh, you know, last week we had a great uh, Friday Q&A with Rowan Dennis. Um, that was amazing. Thank you all for joining. If you did join, um, if you didn't go back, you can watch it again um, on our YouTube channel, on the Wahoo YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as uh, hit that bell for notifications uh, so that you're notified when we go live. Um, Want to make sure that everybody gets the information and you can join these things. So not just for the Q&As, but for the Monday workouts with Neil and as well as for the Wednesday workouts with Susie. I uh, just want to make sure that um, everybody is, is aware of what is happening on a weekly basis. Um, we do have uh, cycling workouts on Mondays, strength and yoga on Wednesdays, and then um, we do a live kind of easy spin Q&A with a special guest on Fridays, and that's hosted by Neil um, this Friday. Oh, sorry, that's at 12 p.m. Eastern every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, right here on our YouTube channel. The, uh, this Friday's guest is, uh, is Amity Rockwell, the 2019 Dirty Kanza 200 uh, winner, as well as a whole host of other races. Uh, and she's going to get into a lot of that. She is also a bit of the brains behind, if you haven't heard of Lead Boat, which is a combination of uh, Leadville Trail 100 mountain bike race, and then the very next day doing SBT gravel. Um, Came, come to find out she that was a bit of her wild idea and I got picked up so um, any of you that are on board for that uh, props to you um, you can blame her because <laughs> it was her idea but she'll be talking about that and kind of where that comes from and her kind of philosophy on endurance sport and and her approach to training and what she likes to do um, but uh, the one other thing I'll say about today's workout is uh, if you, um, if you're a current subscriber to the Sufferfest platform, you can find the link to the workout down in the description below. I should have prompted you on that earlier, uh, but go ahead and click on that now so you can get it queued up. You can follow along. It's not needed for this workout. You can just follow, uh, Susie as she's going to be guiding you through everything anyways. Um, but if you're not a current suffer the Sufferfest, uh, subscriber, um, go ahead and click on the link below in the description as well and, and jump over and use the, uh, the code that's there for um for 44 days free right now um, want to make sure that everybody has the ability to train uh not just to stay fit and to reach your goals uh but also just to manage you know your mental health as well um, as athletes you know it's it's good for us to have goals and and even right now um managing those goals down to even just micro things day-to-day -day little things that you can control so um make sure that you uh you you take advantage of this time um, to train and to, to work on some areas that maybe you've neglected in the past. Um, so today's a great opportunity to work on an area that a lot of athletes neglect, which is just stretching and overall strength work. Um, so look at this as an opportunity and, um, I'll go ahead and bring in Susie here to see how she's doing. Susie, thanks for joining. Hi, thanks, Matt. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. How are things in uh, Reno? Uh, things are great, man. The sun is shining. We've had some 60 degree days. I think it's been almost 70 for the past couple days. And um, I went out mountain biking on Saturday and got a sunburn. So <laughs> things, spring is looking good right now. Who knows? I mean, it could snow tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to. So yeah, well, that's typical kind of weather for you out there. Is is April? Is it can go either way. Uh, yep. But fortunately, you have a great indoor setup behind you there. You've got, you know, your trainer, your kicker, and uh, you've got your treadmill and all the necessary tools you need to, to stay fit yep. and stay healthy and happy um, during this time. Um, 
And so I'll go ahead and let you kind of lead into the workout today, but uh, thanks for joining and um, I'll catch up with you guys in a little while. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, yeah, so welcome to my training room, everyone. Um, like Matt said earlier, this is actually dedicated training space for me. The living room is over there. <laughs> so um, I do all my uh, indoor riding here. I got my kicker and my climb and the fan. Um, do a little bit of running on the treadmill. I can still get outside for runs, which is nice, but I'll do bricks, um, you know, bike run, bike run. I'll use the treadmill for that a lot of times. Um, I've got all my strength equipment over here and yeah, it's a pretty, pretty great setup for me. So um, training inside isn't, isn't too, isn't too bad for me. <laughs> um, so anyways, today I'm going to bring you through um, a little yoga sequence to start, which is um, a little bit different from the yoga we did last week. Um, today we're going to start with the yoga in an effort to warm up and mobilize the body and activate the muscles that we're going to use um, more later on in the strength session. So um, there's not going to be a final resting pose. It's just going to be a little bit more of a flow through yoga sequence, getting some rotation through the spine and just um, using the muscles uh, to wake them up because the nervous system does sometimes take you know, four to six hours to really fully wake up. Um, so if you try and go out and do a workout right out of bed, you know, you feel kind of sluggish and like your body's not responding because your nervous system isn't fully firing yet. So um, even if you're working out later in the day, it's a great idea to do some activation first. Um, and so this is just an example of, um, you know, a, a sequence you can do that will mobilize all parts of your body and just get you ready to go. So get your yoga mat ready. Um, we are going to get right into it. Okay. All right. Let's come down to all fours. So this is known as quadruped position. Your hands are under your shoulders. Your knees are under your hips. We're going to start with hip rotations. We're going to do five reps each side. So you're just going to take your hips in a circle. You can arch and round your back as you go through the motion to get a little, um, it's almost a little bit of warm up for the cat cow that's going to come next. Okay, change directions. And come back to neutral. Now we're going to go through some cat cows and press back to child's pose after cat. So I want you to inhale, exhale, and round your back up to the ceiling. Tuck your chin to your chest and push your hips back to your heels, stretching your arms forward. And a little bit of a child's pose. And we're going to bend your elbows and dive through your hands. Chest comes forward and up, looking up to the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, round your back up to the ceiling. Press back to child's pose. Inhale, dive through, look up, arch your back. Exhale, round up to cat. Drop back to child. Dive through and come back up to cow last time. Inhale, stretch up and cat, and press your hips back in child's pose. Come back to neutral. We're going to press up to down dog. So tuck your toes under, lift your hips, and keep your knees bent. And focus on driving your arms straight and your back straight, keeping your spine long. And now take your hands, walk them back towards your feet, and stand hanging in forward fold. We're going to take your hands, 
Bring them behind your back, interlace your fingers, pull your shoulders back, pull your hands up behind your back, and stretch out the chest and shoulders. You can rock side to side or twist to rotate a little bit, whatever feels good to stretch out those arms and shoulders. And then release your hands back to the mat. Walk out to down dog. This time, pedal your feet. So alternate pressing your heels to the floor. And now take both feet, step forward to your hands to the top of the mat. Hanging forward fold. Inhale, look up. Come on all the way up to standing. Bring your hands up overhead and release. So one thing I forgot to tell you guys, um, go at your own pace as always for the yoga and the strength. Um, if you are new to yoga, um, listen to the cues and watch and just go at your own pace. Don't push yourself too much. Over the weeks, you'll learn the poses and it'll get easier to just flow and um, not have to watch the video so much. You can just listen for the cues. Um, all right, back into it. We're going back up to sweep your hands up overhead and swan dive forward. Relax down and forward fold. Inhale, look up. Fold down and back up to standing and release. This time I'm gonna stretch up to the ceiling. Grab your left wrist with your right hand and side bend to the right. Come back to neutral, switch arms, side bend to the left, back to neutral. One more each side, bend to the right, back to neutral, bend to the left, and back to neutral. Swan dive forward, down a forward fold, inhale, look up. Release your hands to the mat. Step your left foot back into low lunge. So you're going to drop your knee to the floor. Release your toes. Bring your hands up overhead. Palms together. Pressing your hips forward. So your hips and shoulders are square. Inhale. Exhale. Twist to the right. Bring your left hand outside your right knee. Pull your right shoulder back. And bring the hands back to the mat. Hands to the mat. Take your right foot back to plank position. Drop your knees. Keep your body in a straight line. Lower down to the floor. We're going to press up to cobra position. So little press through hands, but lift mostly with the upper back. And lower down. Press up into down dog again. Inhale, exhale, left foot steps forward between your hands. Drop the right knee to the floor. Release your toes. Come on up, hands overhead, palms together. Step square. Inhale here, exhale, twist to the left. Pull that left shoulder around. Bring some mobility through our back. Bring your hands back to the mat. Step your left foot back to plank position. Drop your knees to the floor. This time we're gonna do four tricep push-ups. So make sure your hands are close to your body and point your elbows back behind you. Keep your core nice and tight in a straight line. Slowly lower down and press back up. Inhale as you lower, exhale as you press. Inhale down, exhale press. Last time. Inhale down, exhale, press. We're gonna lower all the way down. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, press back to down dog. Inhale, exhale, step both feet forward, back to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, stand, and all the way up, and release the hands. We're gonna come back down to the mat, so arms up. Swan dive down. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold. Step the left foot back. Drop the knee down to the mat. Coming into low lunge here. Press your hips forward here with your chest 
forward, hands on the mat. Now take your right leg and extend it, pushing your hips back towards your heel. Come back forward, press your chest and your hips forward. Press back, getting a stretch in that hamstring on the right leg. One more time each. Forward low lunge. Press back into half monkey. And come forward, hands to the mat, step back to plank. Drop your knees to the mat, lower all the way down. Release your feet, lift your chest in cobra. And lower down. Again, lift cobra. Lower down. One more time, lift. Lower down and press up to down dog. Inhale, as you exhale, step your left foot forward. Drop your right knee to low lunge. Press your hips and chest forward. And then rock back to half monkey. Come forward to low lunge. Press back and half monkey. Pull the toes up towards your knee. Forward again. Last time to half monkey. Come forward into low lunge. Tuck your toes. This time we're going to step forward into forward fold. Look up. Inhale. Come all the way up to standing. Hands overhead and relax. Back down to the mat. Sweep your arms out and up. Swan dive down. Hands to the mat. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold. Step both feet back to plank. Drop your knees to the mat. Lower down. Press up in cobra. Lower down and push back to down dog. So on this down dog, you can focus on straightening your legs a little bit more. Still pressing through the arms, keeping your spine long and strong. Trying to get our legs a little straighter now. You're gonna take your left foot, bring it towards the center of your mat with your right foot. Stretch up to the ceiling. Now pull that knee forward and step between your hands. Drop your hips and runner's lunge. Your back knee stays up this time. Left hand stays on the mat. Your right hand reaches forward and twists up towards the ceiling, rotating your right or your chest towards your right knee. Bring the hand back to the mat. Take your hands, walk them around your front, uh, your right knee. Bend your left knee and step or drop your hips back into low uh, side lunge. Walk your hands back forward to the top of the mat. Step back into down dog for a second. Now come forward into plank. You're going to keep your right hand where it is. Stack your feet as you rotate into right side plank. So you're going to lift your left hand up to the ceiling. Now drop your hand over top of the head. You're going to step back to wild thing. So left foot steps back, lift your hips, pressing through your left glute. Now restack the feet, come back to plank. Drop the knees, lower down to the mat, press up in cobra, lower down, press up to down dog. Exhale. Now the left foot steps forward into runner's lunge. Keep that right knee up long and strong. Squeeze that right glute so your back leg is straight. Rotate left hand up to the sky. Chest faces your left leg. And back to the mat. Walk back into a right side lunge. Dropping your hips. Flexing your left toes up. Walk your hands back forward. Step back to down dog for a brief second here. Now come back into plank. Left side plank, stack your feet, rotate. Right hand up to the sky, keep your hips forward. 
Drop the right hand overhead, step back. With your right foot, press your hips up. Left arm stays straight and strong. Restack the feet, come back to plank. Drop the knees to the floor, lower the chest down. Up to cobra one last time. Release down, press up to down dog. Deep breath, exhale. Step both feet forward into forward fold. Look up and bring the hands all the way up overhead and release. And we're done with yoga anyway. Now it's time for strength. Hopefully you're feeling uh, warm, warmer than uh, before we started, feeling some muscles um, working. Definitely felt my glutes and my core and my shoulder stabilizers all working um, so that now once we go into strength, we can one, skip the dynamic warm up we did last week, and two, our muscles are already active um, and firing so that when we demand stability from them, for example, a single leg hold, um, our glute, our glute med, all the muscles that stabilize the hip and the foot and the knee and the, the whole leg are, they're gonna fire a lot faster now and you're gonna feel a lot more stable sooner. So um, get your mat ready and a water bottle, empty water bottle if you want no weight, you can put some water in it if you want a little extra weight to it. We're only gonna use it for two exercises. Um, a lot of our strength exercises today are going to be the same as last week. We do have some new ones and we're gonna progress on some of them as well. So get your bottle and your mat. And if you wanna put shoes on, you can. I like to do strength. If I'm not using any weights that I could drop on my foot or something, I like to do it barefoot because it helps, um, you know, engage the muscles in your feet. Um, to strengthen those muscles, and it also helps um, your proprioception. So your balance can be better because your feet are actually in contact with the ground and they're sensing any imbalances sooner than if you're wearing a shoe. You also um, may have better stability without a shoe on because you don't have any heel lift to, for example, push you forward onto your toe. So if you want to Give it a go without shoes, by all means, I encourage. Um, if you wanna put your shoes on, go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna get my stopwatch ready. You can take your mat or towel or whatever uh, you have to maybe cushion your knee. We're gonna start in a kneeling hip drive. So just like last week, the kneeling hip drives forward. <clears throat> your right knee is down on the mat or the floor. Your left leg is forward. You're gonna really press your left heel into the ground for stability. Let's bring our arms up overhead. Thumbs are pointing back. We're gonna take your hips and press forward towards your heel and then pull back. You're gonna stop at neutral here and not go back towards your heel at all. So we're just going forward and back to neutral for 15 seconds. We ready? Okay, three, two, one, and go. So as you press your hips forward, you can pull your hands back. This is a bit of a warm up. Keep your abs lightly engaged and rest. Switch sides. Left knee down, hands overhead. Ready and go. Same thing, press your hips forward, pull your hands back. Keep breathing. And rest. Switch your legs again. So right knee down, left foot forward. We're gonna go hip drive side to side. So right hip presses to the right and then back to neutral. 
Ready? Three, two, one, and go. So your right hip presses to the right, your hands pull to the left, and then restack. Getting some mobility through the back, stability, and rest. Switch sides. Hands overhead, and go to the left. And rest. All right, take your mat, unfold it. So you're gonna lie on it this time. We're gonna do hip bridge for reps. So we're gonna do this for 30 seconds. It's just a glute bridge. You're pressing your hips up to the ceiling. So walk your feet back towards your hands. Keep the weight in your heels. Squeeze your glutes to lift your hips and then lower down. This is a controlled motion. So we're not trying to go as fast as you can or do as many reps as you can. We're just really activating the glutes and feeling your glutes work. A little bit of hamstrings is okay too. Okay, ready? And go. At your own pace for 30 seconds. Squeeze and lower. Squeeze to lift. Control the lower. Keep the abs engaged a little bit. That's gonna prevent you from really pushing from your low back, which we don't want. We want the glutes to do all the work. Keep those knees in line with your hips and feet. Don't let them flare out. And last rep, lower down, relax. All right, coming up to standing. Move your mat out of the way. Grab your bottle. We're gonna do a bent leg tip at the hip with a bottle fly. So bottle is in the opposite hand of the leg you're standing on. I'm gonna start with my left leg standing. I'm gonna start with the hips forward. Okay, squeeze that glute so you're, you feel the left leg is engaged. Bring your right heel back a bit. Keep a little bit of bend in your left knee so you're stable, and then tip your chest forward while you lift your heel behind so that you have a straight line from your shoulders through your hip to your back leg. You're gonna take the bottle in your right hand, lift it up to shoulder height, and then do a little bit of a pulse or a fly. We're gonna do 15 seconds and then switch sides. Okay, I'll stand facing this way so you can see my body position better. Okay, left leg, tip, and begin. Go at your own pace. The speed at which your arm pulses really doesn't matter. You can go fast or slow. The faster you go, the harder it's gonna be to stay stable. And rest, switch legs. Right leg down, engage the core. Glutes engaged, bottles in your left hand, and go. This is a good stability exercise. You might feel your foot and your ankle and your shin really working to keep you stable and balanced. And rest. Come back up. Okay, next we're going to forward lunges. So, we're gonna step left leg forward first. So when you step forward, it's gonna be, it can be a small step, doesn't have to be a big step, because you're gonna drop your right knee to the floor and then press up and back through your left leg. So it's a controlled motion, not a big step. I want you to think about the knee staying stable when you step forward and lower down, that knee doesn't wobble in or out as you lower down or press up. Okay, 15 seconds each side. Ready and go. Ready? 
rest. 10 seconds off and switch legs. Two, ready, go. Right leg is stepping now. Abs are engaged, keeping your torso upright. You should feel your quad working as you lower down and your glute to press back up, rest. We're gonna do that one more time. Back to the left leg. Three, two, one, go. If you need to put your arms out for balance, that is perfectly okay. They can go wherever you need. Go at your own pace. Rest, switch sides. Right leg next. Two, one, go. One more time and rest. Next up is lateral lunge. So we're gonna step with one leg out to the side, hips back towards your heel, and then press back up firm. Ooh, not too hard to you lose your balance. <laughs> so left leg stepping first, your arms can extend out in front of your chest for balance. 15 seconds, ready, go. We're gonna really control the lower and explode up on the step up and rest. I'm gonna switch sides, right leg steps. Two, one, go. I want you to think about your knee staying over top of your heel or your foot middle of your foot in the lunge. <clears throat> One more rep and rest. I'm gonna repeat that. Left leg again. Two, one, go. And rest, switch sides. Two, one, go. Make sure that left leg stays straight. Last rep and rest. Okay, going to single leg hip hinge. So it's just like the bent leg tip at the hip, but this time it's for reps instead of a static hold. So again, so you can see my body position, you're gonna pull that, um, I'm gonna stand on the left leg, pull the right heel up and back. So you feel some tension in your glute, tension in your core, your abs. Keep a little bend in your left knee. You can reach your arms forward for balance. You wanna keep a straight line from your shoulders through your hips to your foot behind you. We're gonna do reps for 15 seconds. All right, and we're gonna do two sets of these as well. Left leg starts, ready, go. Keep your eyes just a few feet ahead of you on the floor. So your neck is neutral. And rest, switch legs. Right leg, ready, go. It's okay if you find your balance on one side is not as good as the other. Just think about pressing your whole foot into the floor. One more rep and rest, switch legs. 
you want to really think about your shoulders and your hips staying um, parallel and perpendicular to the floor. Okay, ready? Or parallel to the floor. <laughs> and go. Left leg again. One more rep. And rest. Switch sides. Keep that right foot grounded. Left heel up. Two, one, go. So you feel the tension in both glutes. Your right glute is extending to bring you back up to standing. Your left glute is active to keep your leg hip extended. Rest. Okay, next up, we've got a single leg squat. Grab your bottle again. We're gonna take the bottle in the opposite hand of the leg you're standing on. So we're gonna do a single leg squat. You're gonna reach with the hand that's holding the bottle. As you squat, you're gonna bring the bottle to the outside of the squatting knee. And as you stand up, pull the elbow back like you're starting a lawnmower. So it's squat and reach, stand and pull. Squat and reach, stand and pull, okay? So only squat as low as you can keep the heel on the floor. So your hips are back, weight is in the heel, knee is stable. Again, minimize or think about controlling the knee so that it's not wobbling side to side. Okay, 15 seconds on each side. Ready and go. Faster you go, the harder it's gonna be to maintain stability. So go nice and slow. So you don't fall over. Last rep and switch. <clears throat> Standing on the right leg. Ready and go. Reach and pull. One more rep. And rest. Switch sides again. Do each one more time. Three, two, one, and go. Really pull that shoulder blade back as you pull your elbow back. Rest, switch sides. Good posture here. Ready, go. Pull that knee up in front as you pull your elbow back. One more rep and rest. Good job. Okay, you can put your bottle down. We're gonna do squats next. So we're gonna do 30 seconds worth. Your feet are about shoulder width. Your hands are gonna come up behind your shoulders or at shoulder level as if you were holding a bar. And just gonna keep your core nice and tight so that your chest stays up, hips go back as you lower down, and then squeeze your glutes to stand up and extend your hips. 30 seconds. Ready, go. So control it down. Float up. Really keep your knees out so they're not collapsing in. Feel those glutes and hamstrings work to press up. Five more seconds. And rest. We're going to do one more set. Okay, three, two, one, and go. Again, go as fast or slow as you feel comfortable. This is your workout. 
Don't try and force anything. Five seconds. And rest. Okay, back down to the floor. If you wanna lie on your mat, open that back up. We're gonna do hip bridge, hold this time. So it's 30 seconds. You're just gonna lift your hips and hold. Okay, feet pulled in towards your butt. Shoulder hip width apart. Okay, weight in your heels. I'm gonna squeeze the glutes to lift. Ready, three, two, one, and go. And hold. Okay, breathe naturally. Keep your low back relaxed. You make sure you're not pressing. You're not trying to press your belly to the sky. You're trying to lift the fronts of your hips or the top of your quads to the sky. Okay, your glutes are doing all the work. Two, one, and rest. Okay, bring your um, the soles of your feet together and drop your hip or your knees out to the sides. We're gonna do some frog crunches. So your hands go up above your chest. You're gonna keep your legs relaxed here and just pull your belly button to spine as you lift your shoulders, chin, and hands toward the ceiling. Okay, we're gonna do this for um, 15 seconds, two times. Three, two, one, and go. And pull that belly in towards the floor. Not a large range of motion. Just very controlled. Lift and lower. And rest. 10 seconds off, and then we go again. Two, one, and go. Remember, reach up, not forward. Two, one, and rest. Okay, now flip over to your belly for push ups. If you want to keep your mat um, under your knees, if you need to drop your knees to the floor, that's fine. Um, we're going to do narrow push ups. So your hands, just like in yoga, are right beside your chest. As you lower down, your elbows point back behind you. So if your knees are on the floor, you're going to squeeze your glutes, press your hips forward, and lower down that way. If this is too easy, lift your knees, press back through your heels so your legs are straight, keep your glutes tight, lower down, and press up. You can also stay, you can be on your toes to lower down and drop your knees to press up if you're somewhere in between. Okay, we're gonna do 15 seconds. Ready, and go. Reps don't matter, form counts more. Okay, so keep it controlled. Elbows tight and rest. Do one more time. Three, two, one, and go. One more and rest. Okay, we're gonna go belly down onto the floor for back extensions. Um, so if you need to open up your mat, Go ahead and do that. We're gonna lie face down. You're gonna bring your hands or bend your elbows and pull them back and lift your hands. So you're squeezing your shoulder blades down your back and then up and together. So from here, we're gonna keep our feet on the floor and just lift your chest 
off the mat. Lift and lower in a controlled motion. 15 seconds. Ready? And go. Two, one, and rest. All right, press up onto all fours. Quadruped position. We're going alternating arm lifts. So your legs stay where they are. I want you to put a little bit of tension in your abs. So you're just pulling your belly button to your spine so your low back flattens out. We're gonna alternate extending the arm up in front of you and replacing it back down. Okay, we're gonna do 30 seconds of this. Ready and go. So we're trying to keep everything stable except for the one arm that's lifting. So this is good for your shoulder mobility, range of motion. A lot of us are restricted in our overhead range of motion. So just only lifting the arm as high as you can keep the elbow straight. Three, two, one, and rest. Okay, now we're going to a plank. So prone plank, that's on our forearms. Once you keep your forearms shoulder width apart, El um, shoulders down your back, hips in line with your shoulders and feet. So everything is really straight. Again, just like last week, think about pulling everything into the center of your body in both directions, lengthwise and um, widthwise. So everything is tight, glutes, abs, squeezing everything together. We're gonna hold for 30 seconds. In two, one, go. So lift and squeeze. Keep your eyes a couple inches in front of your hands. So your head is in line, your neck is straight. Remember to breathe. Five seconds. And rest. Okay, 10 seconds off. We're gonna do that again, but this time we're gonna keep our hands where they are and alternate lifting your feet off the floor. So keep the legs straight and just lift the heel a few inches and then switch. We're gonna alternate and do that for 30 seconds. In three, two, one, and go. So lift and lower at your own pace. Don't let your hips move when you lift the foot. Only lifting as high as you can keep the rest of your body stable. Five seconds. And rest. Okay, roll onto your left side. I'm gonna do side planks. Okay, so left arm down, right hand up. We're going to just hold straight, strict side plank for 15 seconds. Ready, and lift. If this is too hard, you can drop your bottom knee and keep it bent like this and hold there. Two, one, rest. Switch sides. Coming up on the right side. Two, one, go. So really press your hips forward, squeezing the glutes, pulling your shoulders back. Two, one, rest. 
Okay, back to the left side. This time, we're gonna lift the top leg and hold it in that abducted position. So start in a plank and then take your top leg, lift and hold for 15, okay? Only as high as you can maintain form with the rest of your body. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, and lift. You're gonna feel this more in the left glute. Your right glute is working to keep that foot up too. Rest, lower down, switch sides. Okay, ready. Right side is down and lift and hold. And rest. Back to the left side. For our last exercise, we're going to do uh, left side plank, keeping your feet together on the floor. This time, as you lift, you're going to take your right arm and pulse it forward and back. Okay, so only as much as you can while keeping the rest of your body in good alignment position. So that arm pulsing shouldn't throw you off balance. Okay, three, two, one, and lift. Okay, keep those hips stable, shoulders stable. Just move that hand forward and back. And rest, switch sides. Last exercise. Right arm down, left side up. Two, one, go. Really keep your glutes tight, press your hips forward. Top arm is straight. Strong shoulders. Two, one, rest. Woo! Great job, everyone. That is our strength work for today. There was a lot of stability in there. So hopefully you guys are feeling, um, hope you are having a good balance day. <laughs> and you're, <laughs> you're able to uh, get through those 15 seconds without falling over. If not, that's okay. You'll get better with time. The more we do this, it's like anything, practice makes perfect. So you'll get better over yeah. time, I promise. <laughs> Such a good point, Susie. I mean, and, and as we mentioned at the beginning, it, it's such a neglected area for so many athletes, you know, just strength in general um, and, and also just flexibility, you know, especially as cyclists and runners, uh, you know, we move in this very like just one yeah. directional sort of thing. So you know, anything we can do to kind of get that lateral movement in there is is yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, can you can you give us a little bit of insight just real quickly on. Um, if you're a swimmer, you know, a lot, there's a lot of multi-sport athletes right now, you know, who, who I would say we get a lot of messages that they're struggling, you know, especially with swim workouts, you know, like how, how can I stay fit swim? Cause I can't get to the pool. The pool's closed down. I don't have a pool. Um, yep. so I can, you know, maybe I have a treadmill, I can run, I have a, you know, a trainer, I have a kicker and everything. And I can do my workouts on the bike, but I can't do any swim workouts. Do you have any suggestions for that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you know, it's great to maintain the bike and the run routine for your your overall cardio because that will help you when you get back in the pool. Um, as far as, you know, swimming is very specific. So you're going to lose a little bit of swim-specific fitness by not being in the pool. But um, you can maintain your muscular strength by doing strength work, which is going to help you when you get back in the pool. So um, you know, that uh, the cardio aspect may feel a little strained when you get back in the pool because, you know, your breathing is restricted. You can't just breathe whenever you want, like on the bike. So um, 
so maintaining your muscular strength with strength workouts, you know, you can just do more upper body strength. So um, basically replace your swim workouts with strength sessions. And you can have do we added own. we have yeah, Sufferfest just added three yeah. brand new workouts that are more upper body focused. So even if you're a mountain biker or a cyclocross racer or something, you know, just a bike racer who could use a little bit more upper body strength. Um, these are really, you know, helpful for you too. Um, we have three workouts. One is called um, strength focused upper body. And then there are two that are a little bit more geared towards swimmers and have more pulling movements in them because swimming is a lot of pulling, right? And um, they're low equipment. You can do them at home. If you have a stretch cord or resistance band of some kind, or even an, uh, an old bike tube, or heck, a brand new bike tube <laughs> um, that you're willing to sacrifice, you can use that as a resistance band. And um, the, the motions are a lot of pulling to just keep those pulling muscles engaged since you're not swimming. So we're trying to, we're looking out for you guys. I'm in your shoes too, trying to do the best I can to keep some upper body strength in there without the swim. So yeah, check those workouts a, out. It's always a balancing act for sure. You know, and, and I mean that metaphorically and also literally <laughs> as we just got done doing a bunch of balancing. Um, yep. uh, yeah. I mean, definitely, you know, if, uh, what, if you guys don't know much about Susie, Susie is a, you know, a coach for uh, the Sufferfest. I mean, also a professional athlete. Um, you can find all her, all her, uh, the races that she's won and, and, and what she's kind of done in the space. But, but for Sufferfest, you know, a lot of those multi-sport plans uh, that you see on Sufferfest, uh, those are done with her consultation and, and done with her creating them. Um, so, you know, you're getting a really good expert opinion here, not just an opinion, but a scientific approach to uh, training that comes from years and years of experience in, in coaching um, and also in performance herself. So um, I just want to give Susie a little plug there that, you know, you bring a lot to the table here and these workouts are done with a lot of intention. Uh, so really give it a look, um, check out the sufferfest.com. Uh, all that link, all that information is down in the description below along with the, uh, the, the discount code for uh, all in stuff plan um, to get the 44 days uh, free right now. So obviously we're just pushing that because right now is a great time for people to be, you know, obviously indoor for safety um, and health concerns. Uh, but we, you know, we want to maintain as athletes, we want to maintain our fitness, um, but we also want to be happy. And so, as I mentioned, at the beginning of the, the live stream is, you know, your mental health is very important and and we we address a lot of that in those plans um but also just uh having a really good uh plan for your indoor time um can give you a lot of motivation to to kind of prepare for when you're able to go back to racing or or uh whatever it is that you know you kind of consider is like your competition uh getting the best out of yourself so uh thanks Susie, for today i appreciate it and uh we'll catch up with you next uh wednesday right yeah Absolutely. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Hope to see you back here again next week. See you, Susie. See you. All right. One last thing from me. Thanks again for joining. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and give you a little plug again. Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Join us again right here on the Wahoo uh, YouTube channel. We will have um, 2019 DK 200 winner. Uh, Amity Rockwell on doing a light spin, taking your live questions. So definitely get your questions queued up. Um, we have some big names coming up in the following weeks as well. So make sure you subscribe to the Wahoo YouTube channel. Uh, hit that bell for notifications um, so that you get prompted when we're when we're going to go live and when we schedule a live stream. Um, and then, of course, uh, we will see you um, on Friday. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.